The kneeling monk prop is pretty much at a standstill until the solenoid valve comes in. So I want to turn my attention now to planning out the next stage of the haunt, which is the catacombs. <laughs> You're going to turn the corner from the gallery hallway and you're going to walk through like a broken wall into the catacombs and directly in front of you is going to be a crypt. My internal debate has been whether to have an animated crypt or a stationary one. My original plan was to have a stationary one, but then I've seen some online where the lid moves, slides back and forth, and I rather like them. I think. Uh, Derek, D minor sound, has one with a pretty unique uh, mechanism. And Erie Acres, I know, has one as well. I've seen a few of them online. Not as many as I thought I would, but I've seen a few. My limitation is, is the width of my hallways. My entire haunt is only like eight feet wide. So this particular hallway is a little over three foot or so wide. And when you're turning the corner there, it actually narrows down into a two foot space. Now, it's still open on top, but where the crypt is going to be, it's going to take up some of the floor space. So the effective moving area is like about two, 24 inches, maybe a little bit more. So I can't have that lid moving very far. Otherwise, it's going to enter into that space and it's going to make it difficult for people to go through. So, I mean, if it did move, it would only be able to move like a couple of inches. And, but I saw another one online today and I'm not quite sure who it is. I'll post the link though. But he basically just left the, didn't have it move, just left it static, but open. And then just had a green light with some, what do you call, fog coming out. I kind of like that too. And I think maybe for my space limitations, that might be the way I'm going to have to go. And now the catacombs is more appropriately going to be called, what's going to be called a columbarium. And that's a niche wall where you would store uh, the cremated remains of uh, people. So on the top part of the wall, uh, I want to have like the plaques where the people would have had their remains stored. But on the bottom, there's going to be two open bins, call it. Pretty long, about five to six foot long. And I want to have a couple of corpse figures, one in each one. My other uh, idea then is with these uh, niche plaques that are going to be on the wall to have one of them triggered and move. Uh, Hollywood Haunter, I know, uh, had talked about having uh, one of theirs done when they had done a, um, that kind of uh, a scene in their walkthrough, but they said they didn't just never had time to go about uh, making it. So I'm thinking of having uh, one of those move and then that would really negate the need to have the crypt moving too. So that's where I want to turn my attention now is to that area of the haunt. Probably not going to start on the... Uh, the crypt until after I finish the kneeling monk prop. But I think what I'll, I'll do now in the meantime is to corpse a skeleton. Montclair's lair had a pretty neat uh, corpsing technique I just saw. And by the way, he's just started uh, vlogging himself and he's got four episodes. And he's got some uh, pretty good videos out there. One of them happens to be this uh, corpsing technique using liquid nails. I know I've heard of it before. I just never actually saw it used. And seeing someone do that kind of a technique, now I actually want to try that myself. So I'm going to go grab a couple of skeletons and do some plastic corpsing. And then over that, I'll do the liquid nails. All right, no plastic garbage bags with this one. I got me some real live sheeting here. Montclair's lair made this look pretty simple, something even I should be able to do. And since there's no electronic parts to fry, I just might be able to do this. 
somehow I don't think he was using the same liquid nails. Right, using the paint thinner with the liquid nails, it does make it easier to apply. And then once the paint thinner, paint thinner, <laughs> paint thinner dries up, the consistency of the liquid nails comes back. I've done the front, and I've done both arms, and so far it's looking pretty good. About 15, 20 minutes of uh, going over this with the uh, heat gun has helped the drying process. One of the things Montclair's Lair did on his prop was created a wound on the top of his head out of some of the uh, liquid nails and basically painted it black in there and it looked like a really cool wound. But that got me thinking, what if I made like small pock marks on the skull's face, like it had the plague, like pustules. That's what I'm trying now to see if I can get something that would be equally cool as uh, his detail. And all I'm doing here is just dipping the tool in some paint thinner just to help smooth it out some. I'm gonna allow the corpse to dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll hit it with uh, stain and paint and we'll see how this comes out. If you like what you see, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you don't already do so. That way you'll be notified right away when the next video is posted. I'm here daily uh, doing Halloween props and I'd like you to come along for the ride. But let me know in the comments section below if you think I should make a moving crypt or keep it uh, static, and maybe just have it in the lid open. Again, keeping my uh, space limitations in mind. Okay, thanks for watching. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna give that a go on uh, these, uh, on these, uh, <laughs> or rather just leave it static and either fully closed, clothed, <laughs> closed. Look at this shit, man. <laughs>